In Republican America this week, Benghazi was all the rage. If you watched Fox News, this story was like, you know, they saved Hitler's brain times men walk on the moon. It was the biggest story ever. And if you listen to normal people, it was just some partisan dopes trying to make political hay off some dead bodies. I still don't know what the scandal is. But is did anyone? Didn't they have a point? No. You don't think so? so? What is the point? Well, the way I see it is that one of the problems that Republicans have had on this is that lots of people in the media, uh, and here probably, don't like Republicans. And so the Washington Post, for example, this week said, well, you know, you know who's talking about Benghazi? It's people who go to Chick-fil-A and it's white rich guys, you know. Right. But, you know, if, if a white rich guy who likes... what that meant. That was stupid. Right, but if a white let's rich guy like... Let's not go there. Well, no, but it is, but it is because everyone has reported on this by saying, well, Republicans keep banging on about this. But well, if, they do. Yeah, right. But if Republicans say 2 plus 2 equals 4, it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Okay, tell me what the scandal is. Well, what I, I'm, I, I'm, I honestly want to know, because I heard what the guy, a guy testified that he heard when there was the attack on the embassy that an attack was going on, so he called the Air Force or somebody in the military to send jets, and they said, I'm sorry, they couldn't get there in time. The end. Well, no, that, that's... Right. Tell me I, what I'll this... tell you what the scandal is. I mean, Great. The, the problem is that this arose when, about six weeks before the election when everybody was desperate to protect with their side. So Fox News was, this is the worst scandal ever. MSNBC was, Obama did absolutely nothing wrong. He acted perfectly as always. And the reality was something in between, which was... A U.S. ambassador was killed. There's only been six times in our nation's history when that happened. The president went on the air, and other people did too, and made statements that proved to be untrue about why the attack took place, that it was a reaction to this film. When re that, that's just a reality. Whether they were lying or just in error, the statements they made were, were it was untrue. That it the was a fluid situation. No, but, they... but, but it's still, but when the government goes on the air and says things that prove to be untrue, that is a, something that needs to be investigated. And it was in a place where President Obama and NATO had gone and invaded and bombed and changed the regime. I'm not saying it's a huge scandal, but there certainly are questions when the government and, and, and political officials six weeks before an election and say things about a major event like that that proved to be untrue. There should be investigations, even if the Republicans are doing it for political ends. The same was true when Democrats were investigating Bush officials and saying these are the worst scandals ever. Yeah, Republicans were saying you, nothing you know happened what, You here. know what Dick Cheney said two days ago? He said, when we were there on our watch, we were always ready on 9-11. <laughs> I swear to God, without irony, right. that's right. what he said, on the anniversary. Well, there wouldn't be an anniversary if he had been doing exactly. his job in the first and the, place. And the other thing that wasn't mentioned there um, in, in what Glenn said was the CIA. The CIA's initial assessment of what happened in Benghazi was that it was yeah. the result of these other uh, attacks that were going on um, in other, you know, around the Arab world. And here's the thing. This is a prototypical Washington scandal. It's a scandal about a memo. The big bombshell that was released by ABC News was 12 edits to the memo. That's what we're down to. Republicans are so desperate for a scandal that they're, they're, they're now fighting over whether or not the talking points were massaged properly before Susan Rice went on Meet the Press. The underlying scandal, what Republicans are trying to imply, and the reason that the mainstream media isn't picking it up, they're implying that either Barack Obama himself, the President of the United States, decided not to protect that, uh, that embassy, that compound, decided not to help them, right? Or that they created this entire cover-up to stop people from knowing that they haven't gotten rid of every single member of Al-Qaeda. No, and neither of those two right. things that's either true that's or plausible. The scandal here is that the media, as it did during the Bush years, sides with power. If, if the media did not want to investigate this, and so it reported a process story right from the beginning. What was the first story? Mitt Romney attacks what, the president. What, what should they have reported? What is the scandal? You still don't tell me. Well, first what off, is, when, when I knew what the scandal with Watergate was. I knew it wasn't Iran Contra. I could tell you what it was, what the crime was. Well, actually, What's the crime? Well, you didn't know what the Something scandal was. Something bad happened in the world. Obama's supposed to micromanage everything that happens in the world. He's got four million people under his charge. You, you don't think you don't think that when a U.S. ambassador is killed. And there are people within the State Department saying that they were asking for help and not getting it, and that the U.S. government went onto the world stage for a week and made claims about what happened that not that, that turned out not to be true. That that doesn't merit any okay. investigation. Wait, you all, think right, of all right, let's Bush move. On. No, wait, I don't. Lying, you I don't, don't you and I'm say, bored with it. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> uh, let, let me ask you this: what, when.
a lot of the argument is over why the riot happened. Was it because it was the anniversary of 9-11? Or were they pissed off because, remember, at the time there was this movie that was made by some right. guy, I think he lived out here. Right. Uh, it was called Innocence of the Muslims or anything. He's but, in jail now. Okay, right. But any time you burn a Koran or draw a cartoon of the Prophet or whatever, there are riots. and. Uh, isn't this a soft bigotry of low expectations? You know, the way we accept that, of course, if you make a movie that insults the prophet or says something bad about Allah, there's going to be a riot. This is insane. We should not accept this. Well, and, and when you see what happened, like in Syria, we found out recently the rebels are fundamentalists. They're not people who are on our side. Every time something happens where we overthrow a Muslim government, this Arab Spring, Egypt, it, it happened, I mean, Iran years ago. It seems Afghanistan, the Taliban took over. It seems like it's worked. I know dictatorships are bad, but theocracies are actually dictatorships themselves, aren't they? So uh, I think Americans have a, a problem thinking about this sometimes because, uh, and I include myself and British people, because the revolution that happened here was great. Um, and very rarely is that the case in the world. Uh, you know, you have this revolution in America in which um, the British fight the British and then they codify classical liberal values into a constitution and it's great. But that's not how it goes down normally. Normally there's bloodshed and it's horrible and especially in the Middle East what they want to replace their dictatorships with if you look at the, the polling is Sharia law. <laughs> Exactly. So, but the revolution in the U.S. was great unless you were a slave, and then there was a war in which 600,000 Americans had to die to make it better. No, so the is, revolution isn't always great. The French you know Revolution, what? there were beheadings, right? Revolutions are messy. Yes. You know and if what? you want uh, people that, to have democracy, that is a, it, it can be messy. Right, it can right? be messy. But that, the slavery point, I think, is cheap, if I'm honest. You mean the revolution in the United States that produced a government that included slaves, that included enslaved Africans, it's a cheap shot to include that in the no, narrative? I mean, that is part of the narrative. No, the point is, is that if you're looking for perfection, in the 18th century are not going to find it. What the Americans did was a massive step forward. It wasn't perfect. It was resolved in a civil war that was bloody and awful. But if we're going yes. to write off the greatest revolution and the greatest constitution in world history because it was imperfect and it was flawed, then we well, might no as well all go home. Off, but well, the point are, is, but is that in the Middle East, we're saying that these are also imperfect revolutions. No, I agree with Bill. No, Whenever the U.S. Worse. goes in and tries to impose our vision of democracy in that region, we fail. We no, no, took no, Mossadegh that, out in, in Iran, and we ended up with the, sh the Shah, and then we ended up with But the that's ISIS. not our fault. It's not our fault what came out. We didn't go into Egypt. Well, we, we did. wound up with the Muslim we brother. We didn't go into Egypt. We were supporting and propping up Mubarak for 30 years, even as we were cheering for all the Tahrir Square demonstrators as though we were on their side. It was our government that kept Mubarak in power, just like we've done across the entire Muslim world. I'm and, it, and, no, but, and, and it's amazing for you to say that, well, look at all these Muslims. The minute you give them a little bit of freedom, they go wild and they start being all violent. How can you be a citizen of the United States, the country that has generated more violence and militarism in the world over the last five Five or six decades and say look at those people over there they are incredibly violent we play a significant role in what has been happening in the Middle East because we've well, been interfering and dominating that region in order to have access to the I wasn't talking Israel. about violence so, I was talking about theocracy that doesn't happen here no, well and, okay that doesn't happen here but at the same time Iran isn't invading lots of other countries and occupying them for a decade nor are fundamentalist Muslim countries the way the United States is so these things are interlinked because we are continuously interfering in that part of the world. And so to say... Really, it's all our fault? It's not all our fault, but when you send your military for six straight decades into other countries to bomb them, kill their children and women and innocent men, well, we weren't prop up dictators, you know yeah, you take responsibility for your actions and say, to the extent that that region That religion is, goes back a thousand years before our revolution. So I don't think we can take all the blame. I don't think we should. I think we should take a lot of it. And there's lots of really? bodies and corpses that have been piled up in the name of Christianity and Judaism as well. Not recently. Have That's you heard of the occupation of the West Bank and, and Gaza for the last 50 years, motivated in part by extremist views of Judaism or the wars in Europe or the fact that there were generals in the United States saying we have to go and invade and destroy Iraq, a country of 26 million people, because our God is bigger? Lots of religions, not just Islam, produce violence. Well, well, if I could just well, make that, one quick point about that Egypt. That silly I mean... liberal view <laughs> that all religions are alike because it makes you feel good. No, it makes you feel good true. to say our side is better than no, people over there are feel primitive good to put a crown on your head and say, I'm a good person. How do but I prove you get, that? You get to ignore the responsibility that your own government has for the violence and instability in the world by saying, look, it's that primitive religion over there that's to blame.